Okay, so my grandma and I made a blackberry wine and it's pretty good. We're real happy about it. It's all done. The whole thing's done. But we made it a long time ago and that footage just uh, fell off to the wayside. So for those of you who were missing the old style of presentation, here's the, here's the throwback one and uh, I hope you like it. So without further ado, let's do it. All right, give us the intro. Well, <laughs> so as you could tell from that awesome intro, we're making blackberry wine today. And it's going to be great. It is, and I'm so <laughs> excited. I can't wait. <laughs> Me neither. Um, here's the basic breakdown of what we're going to do. I had these blackberry pie fillings just lying around, and I wanted to use them. We've got three of them. I think there's about a total of like three pounds of pie filling, and there's only going to be from that like half a pound and a half of actual blackberries that's in them because there's other stuff too. So we have like five and a half pounds of blackberries, fresh fruit. We're gonna combine all of it into a wine. And so I, I realize you don't gain a lot from these pie fillings. It's just sugar and blackberries. But I have them lying around, so we're gonna use them. Flavor. It's, that's exactly right. Well, go ahead and introduce yourself to the people. Hi, I'm Miles's grandma. That's right. Okay, so. <laughs> and I haven't been called grandma my whole life. <laughs> No. There's another name I've been called. No. But obviously he doesn't want to use that in this particular arena. We can't start with that name because they're going to be like, what the hell does that mean? <laughs> My sister, when she was a little girl, just randomly called her Naki and the name stuck. And so that's what that we call her. She's Naki. So that's what I'll call her from now on. But see, if I started there, you wouldn't have known what that meant. I know. I know. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is open them up and put them into our bucket, our fermentation bucket, okay? So, Grandma, grab the, the thing. All right, so we're just gonna open them up. Let me go ahead and give you the ingredients in our pie filling. Uh, the first thing is blackberries. That's good, that means it's the largest contribution to what makes this stuff up. Then water, sugar, which is also good because we'll ferment that. Modified cornstarch, that's not the greatest thing, it's what makes it thick, thicken up into a pie filling. That should be fine to ferment with. It might create clarity issues down the road. I'm not super worried about it. And citric acid for flavor. Okay, so once they're opened up, no, you can, this will be you. Oh. So not trying to not control things. Okay. Uh, just put them into your bucket because we're going to make a gallon of wine and I'm not going to use one of those glass carboys. We're using a bucket today. So just plop it in there. Ooh, kind of pours here. I'm old school. I like to get everything out of there. Absolutely. Now, Naki, yes. I don't know if you know this about when guests come onto my show, <laughs> but I want you to give me two fun and interesting facts about you. About me? Uh-huh. Oh my gosh. Well, I am <laughs> a hospice nurse. <laughs> yep. She works with the dying, so that's pretty cool. And I have seven grandchildren. Is that right? Yeah. So as you can see, just looks like a bunch of thick pie filling at the bottom of a bucket. Because that's exactly what it is. So the next thing you want to do is add a gallon of water to your mixture. Because we're going for a gallon of wine. And we need to stir up all that thick pie filling so it, you know, is something that can ferment into wine. Are we experimenting here, or do you really know what you're doing? <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I've, I've changed my mind. Okay. Just what, what you actually want to do is just pour enough water in here to start to loosen up the pie filling and stir it into something approaching a liquid. Next thing you want to do is get a brewing bag. That's pretty essential for this process, and it just makes fermenting with fresh fruit easier. So put your brewing bag into your bucket and string it around the sides like this. Okay. Now this, this is five and a half, maybe six pounds of fresh blackberries. Have I been saying blueberries this whole time? I don't think so. Okay, I blackberries. Don't... This is a blackberry wine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And we're just gonna put them into the bag because we wanna crush them up, pulverize them with our hands and juice them. Now, we did not do this because I just didn't plan it out accordingly, but the best way to do this when working with fresh fruit of any kind for your wine or meat or whatever is to freeze it first. We didn't do that. So the best way to do it is put it in a bowl, put it in the freezer, and then let it thaw because then water expands when it freezes so it kind of breaks up the fruit. You get more juice that way. Makes it a little easier. 
But we didn't do that. Okay. That's okay. So then tie off your bag, because now we're going to mash it up. Well, Naki here is going to mash it up. Ooh. Just get in there. Naki, just... I think I don't have arthritis. <laughs> <laughs> I know she doesn't look it, but she's actually 97 oh, as of two weeks up. ago. Shut up. Because you look 105. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> so it should look something like this. It's all crushed up. And it looks like a fruit smoothie. And it's ready to go. So now, take the rest of your water and pour it in. Okay, so we put in, what was that? Maybe three-fourths a gallon of water. And we filled it to about this hot. It's too, we, we don't want to fill it anymore. Okay, because if you fill it all the way to the top through fermentation, this thing will probably explode. Uh, so we got, a, that means we got a lot of blackberry juice, which ideally, if we could have a gallon of pure blackberry juice, that's the way to make a wine. But this is, this is a good close second. So just fill it to here. Typically, I like to take a gravity reading before I add any sugar to see what uh, sugar contributions we got from the fruit, and in this case, the pie fillings. But from all that cornstarch, this stuff is pretty soupy, and there's a lot of pulp from the fruit floating around because there, there was fruit in the pie filling. It's not all in the bag. Yeah. We're not going to get an accurate gravity reading. So based on calculations from what's listed on the back of the pie fillings, there's just less than a pound of sugar from the pie filling. So we're going to add sugar. We're going to, it's called chaptalizing when you add sugar to your pre-fermentation mixture to get more alcohol. Okay. okay, so a pound and a half, this should land us in a gravity of around 1.09, 1.1, which is 13 or so percent ABV. Yeah, okay. pretty good. And that's, is that a good yeah, amount? Yeah, that's a good amount. Okay, all right, Naki, take this, pour it in, and stir it, it up. Yes. Woo. And we're just using white table sugar. If you wanted to be creative, you could do brown sugar of any of its... What is it? Light, dark, medium? Mm -hmm. What do you call that? There's light brown sugar and dark brown sugar. Yeah. So you could use of any of its variations. You could use maple syrup. You could use honey. But we're just, I, I want a simple, straightforward blackberry wine to see how it tastes. Because I'm curious. Do we need to know that it's all dissolved? Yes. So it can't sound like that. No. Nope. Scratchy. That means there's sugar. That's right. <laughs> you know what I should have done before this? was did a little bit of Google researching about using cornstarch in fermentations. Oh. It'll bring it'll be fine, probably. But there is cornstarch in that pie filling. There is. I'm confident it's not going to inhibit fermentation. I'm just wondering it might it might make it cloudy. And that's that's okay. That's all that happens. Have you never used pie filling before? No. Oh. So. Wow. If this doesn't work at all, well, then we learned something. We did. And that's invaluable. And then we'll have syrup to put on our pancakes. Mm hmm So these are yeast nutrients. Oh, that was it. <laughs> Not yeast. Not nutrients. yeast. Nutrients. That's nutrients. right. Sorry. So we have two, go firm and fermento. Both of these are just different forms of dead yeast because yeast are cannibals, and so they can use the nutrients of dead yeast to make a good, healthy fermentation. The go firm you want to use today. You're going to add 1.3 grams of that to one gram of our yeast. It's about a fifth of a packet of those packets of yeast. And the yeast we're going to use today is QA23. Why that one? Well, I had a little bit of a packet left, and I want to use it up. And I use QA23 on a lot of stuff, because I just like that yeast. Um, so anyway, you take your 1.3 grams of gopherm, you add it to one gram or a fifth of a packet of the QA23, and you add just a little bit of a water in a jar, shake it up, and you put that off to the side. When you do that, it looks like this, okay? Uh -huh. This is the stuff. This, it's just rehydrating. The yeast are coming back alive, getting used to their environment, and they're sucking up the nutrients from the go firm. Then you end up taking this after 20 minutes and you put it in your fermentation. But the other one, the Fermate O, it's a little bit more complicated. You're gonna take one and a half grams and throw it in 24 hours after you make this, so tomorrow. And then a day after that, you add one and a half grams more. So it's a little staggered. You give your yeast just a little bit every step of the way for the best process of absorption of the nutrients. This one contributes nitrogen. This one just contributes other micronutrients. So it's pretty fascinating, isn't it? It is. Yeah. It is. Okay. So it's been more than 20 minutes. I've had this prepared for a while. So we're just going to take it and put it in. Pour it straight in. Pour it straight in. Okay. 
and stir it. Now the last thing we're gonna add into this is a vanilla bean. Typically, unless you add a ton of vanilla, it's not primarily for the flavor of vanilla. It's not what you add it to meads or wines. Vanilla can build up the flavor in the body of whatever wine you add it to. Rather than contributing its own flavor, it acts as a bodybuilding agent. So this will make a fuller flavor profile, which is what we want. It's just a nice little touch. Mm. Yes, the best way to do it is not to just toss it in, but to cut it up, chop it up, open up the insides. That's what we're gonna do. Yeah. So would you say the vanilla bean potentiates the flavor? <laughs> Is Potentiate? That, yes. Is that the right word? That is a good word to use. Okay. Yeah. I like it. Okay. See, I'm more than a pretty face. <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay, so they're all chopped up now. We're just going to put them right in. <laughs> As my grandmother pointed out, <laughs> the airlock you want to fill halfway with sanitizer water because then it functions to let CO2 out without letting anything in, like bugs or oxygen or bacteria. So it's a one-way valve. So There's nothing worse than drunk bugs. No. <laughs> so you just put it in to the grommet here. Okay. Get it securely in there. And then you want to just pop that on. <laughs> it's actually really hard to do it. Okay. So I'll go ahead. Ooh. So now we're off to the races. Everything is put together and this should turn into blackberry wine over several weeks. Now there's a chance that the cornstarch thing is a huge issue that ruins this whole thing, prevents it from working. If that happens, I'll just go buy more fruit and we'll do this again. <laughs> because as you know, I do often make mistakes and sometimes big mistakes, but we all learn along the way. Yes, we do. Yes. So as far as what you can expect, assuming this works over the next couple weeks, Expect, number one, to see activity in the airlock. You'll see bubbles consistently going up and out and up and out. And if you don't see any, that means your yeast are dead. You need to repitch yeast and try again. But you have to open it again tomorrow to put in some other more matado. <laughs> Fermato. Oh, Fermato. Yes, and so that's the second thing. Expect tomorrow and the day after that to open this up and put in your one and a half grams of Fermato to give your yeast some nutrition as it ferments along. The third thing is expect this to take anywhere from two weeks to a month. It might even take five weeks or more. Um, it just depends on how long the yeast need to turn the sugar into alcohol. But give it time. As long as you see activity in the airlock, let it keep going. Don't interrupt the process. Well, thanks, Naki, for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Yes. This was great fun. It was. And honestly, we've been hanging out all day because there have been a bunch of little things we had to do, and it's been a really good time with you. Yes. Come back for part two, and we'll show you what to do. But in the meantime, watch more videos, and have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye now. Hi.